Hello, Flower family. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and I love all things art making, specifically heavy texture gel mediums and then using piping tips and palette knives to create my art. You're in my studio space here and I'm wearing this lovely garment. If you're anything like me, aprons don't work really well and I'm going to get something on my clothes anyway, so I might as well wear something specifically for art making. Speaking of art making, I have a art market coming up in about two weeks. This marks one year of full markets. So I started in spring of 2023 and I have a little bit of inventory, but I figured I would create just a few more things to add variety. If that's something that you find interesting, please stick around and let's get creating. Here are some magnets and brooches that have already dried and are ready to be assembled. Some I have piped previously and then attached to the wooden rounds with some gel medium and others I piped directly onto the wooden surface like this one here. Here are the magnets as well as the backings that I'll be using. Before I adhere my backings to my brooches, I like to take a colored pencil and I'll add a dot there where the center is. This way it's easy to find when it's ready to be attached. For my magnets, I'll be taking some clear heavy texture gel medium to adhere those two, and I find that's just as good as any other adhesive, and I like using it because I have it readily available. These magnets are really durable and strong. However, I just recently had an artist friend tell me that they are scratching some of her surfaces. So what I've been doing now is using acrylic paint to cover them and adding a barrier between the magnet and the surface. Here I'm taking some of that clear medium and I'm adding it to the back. And once that's done, I'll just take a paintbrush or a palette knife and clean that up. To adhere the backings onto these brooches, I've been using this Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel and I think it works nicely. Now through the magic of editing, these are complete and will dry over by a fan. I just recently posted a tutorial on how to pipe a hydrangea with heavy texture acrylic paint. And these are the leftovers. If you haven't checked out that tutorial yet, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. But again, these are the leftovers from that piece. And I typically like to use leftovers for my magnets, brooches, keychains, mini pieces that you see here. I find that I usually will pipe a little more than I need because even though I have an idea of an original piece of artwork that I'm creating, I like to make more flowers because sometimes the flowers don't dry correctly or maybe I thought I only needed 10 flowers but I really needed 20. So this makes it so where I can use them, repurpose them, and give them a new life. Hello, good afternoon, or whatever time of the day it is for you. It is the next day, so I'm gonna catch you up to speed on some things that were completed yesterday. I finished four three by threes, some magnets and brooches, which is great. However, I don't think I got as much done as I would have liked. So I had most of the day yesterday, and then poof, it was gone. So trying to catch up today with some more things and maybe hopefully get more things done. I woke up this morning, went to yoga, which is great. I used to average six to seven times a week and now I'm lucky if I go once a week. So there's that. Once yoga was done, I went grocery shopping and got a few things for the week. I came home and made myself a green smoothie, trying to get more greens in my diet. My hubby came home from his work trip, made him a sandwich, and now we're here. 
I'm thinking more three by threes, more magnets. I think we're good on brooches. On top of that, I do need to focus on some things for work. For those that don't know, I'm an elementary art teacher, kindergarten through fifth grade, so there's some lesson planning and editing some videos for the classroom. Then there's laundry. So lots of things to do and let's get started. Good morning or whatever time of the day it is for you. I just thought I'd give you guys an update on my progress. It's been about a week's time, so I wasn't able to hop on during the week. It is Saturday, March 2nd, and I realized the other day that I haven't been very good about putting the date. So hopefully I'll go back and put those in for you all. I have a week until the market, so there are some things I really need to focus on and get done. With that being said, I had some ideas that I wanted to try out. I've been focusing on flowers and a lot of different cottage core esh things like mushrooms and snails. And I wanted to try out some succulents and cacti. So don't know if that's the wisest decision, but I figured I'd give it a go. There's some paint mixing that I need to do and some techniques I need to try out. So let's get started. Hello, it's the next day, Sunday, March 3rd. Not sure what was recorded yesterday, but I focused on mixing some paint and preparing some wooden canvases for some future projects. I was able to practice piping succulents and cacti, which I have not done before. It was a little frustrating at first trying to get the handle of the shape, but I'm happy with the results. I was able to complete a few things so I'm excited to show you those later. Today, I'm going to focus on a few more items, maybe create some more succulent type paintings and see where we go from there. Here are some completed magnets that I was able to finish up yesterday. I really love how they turned out. I think they're so cute. So. These are the completed piece, and then on the back, I'll adhere some magnets onto those. And I like to use these here. All my three by threes include a mini easel, and I love that it's a great way to add color to any small space. So you could put this on your desktop or a bookshelf or even a coffee table. I think it's just so cute. Not quite even. It's a little more successful. So a little lopsided. We're gonna keep trucking though and see what we got here. not even from space to space, so it makes it difficult to pipe the other pieces. It's a cute little guy. I'm trying to clean up a little bit on the bottom. That's why I like to dry surfaces 
at a time. So this way I can go back and clean anything that I need to without having any issues. I think that's why it takes me so long to finish something is because I wait in between and let things dry. But I just find that it's a method that works well for me. Trying to decide whether or not I want to do another succulent before I let this set for a bit. All right, I think I'm gonna go for it. Carpe diem, comment below if you know what that means. I might have some trouble getting some things back there, so that placement might not have been the best choice. I love these colors. Kind of made it work, so we'll see from here on out. Don't know how cake decorators do it. They make it look so effortless. I'm trying to remember to go smaller as I move upwards. I think I forget to breathe. Oop. Good morning. Today is market day. I'm currently on the way to the bank to grab some singles. I have enough five, tens, and twenties, but no singles, and I like to have enough cash available just in case a customer would like to pay with that. I've noticed in the past that most will pay with either cash or card, and I do have a square reader. I just upgraded to the chip reader, and I really like using that one. I think the payment process goes by faster, or at least in my mind, it does. I have the car packed. It's ready to go. We can start setting up at 11. It's currently nine. Don't think that I will go right at 11 because I don't have too much to set up or I don't think I do. So I guess we will find out. It's currently 40 ish degrees. We've been having some weird temperatures in Texas. It's been really hot and it's been really rainy. So I think that's why we're having this cold front. So hopefully it doesn't affect the outcome of today. I'm really excited and hope that you will come along with me. So let's get to it. Hello all, here I am at the event giving you a fit check. I love overalls, this is what I usually wear at markets. They're just super comfortable and have lots of pockets. This canopy is a quick tent and I purchased it online. I like that you're able to set it up yourself. However, two is always nice. This gentleman was so nice to offer up his help. I'm putting down the weights because it's super important to have weights, especially on a windy day like this. I believe that these six foot tables are from Walmart and I like how lightweight they are. I purchased this wire rack from Amazon and I like that I can break it down and set it up pretty easily. I also purchased these table coverings from Amazon. I have a storefront if you're interested, it'll be linked below. When I decided to start vending at art markets and festivals, I did my best to repurpose and or purchase things that were relatively inexpensive, such as the table runners are from our wedding, and a lot of the display items were things I purchased from a thrift store, just like this little magnet wall, which is I think an Ikea shelf that I found there. I created that little ladder from things that I purchased from Hobby Lobby or from Joann's. This little display is something that I thrifted. So I really tried my best to find things that I could use that 
wouldn't hurt my budget when I first started. Hello, I finally set up. It's about possibly a half an hour before the event starts. It starts at two. I had to put up one of my walls because it is very windy today and I'm hoping that everything stays intact. I had to put some of my paintings flat so this way they wouldn't blow over. I have a vendor over to my left is a jewelry vendor and a few other food vendors. Oh, you can see that it's really windy. Uh, hopefully we do well and we'll see how it goes. I'll try to keep you updated. <laughs> yeah, there's our little kits. You can adhere them onto the canvas. There's paint for you to decorate it yourself and just a fun little thing to kind of do it yourself. That's very cool. Thank you. Well, have a great day. Thank you, you too. Hello, just checking in. We're about almost an hour into the event and I had a few sales and some embarrassing things too happened where my square reader that I was telling you about wasn't working. And so this kind lady was like, here, do you have Apple Pay? And I no, I've never set it up. So luckily she was able to work through that with me. She was so sweet. And then the next customer, same issue couldn't figure it out and so I was like do you have any other form of payment and they were very gracious and kind so lots of um, grace today at this festival but um, trying to stay out of the wind and I'll check back with you guys later okay just want to check in again let you know card reader is back on so I was able to disconnect and reconnect and now we're good so we are currently at three o'clock we got two more hours, so. Not sure if you're gonna be able to hear me or not, but the festival's about to end and they're doing their final celebration of all the colors. So hopefully I'll be able to capture some of that. <sighs> Today was great. And I've really had an amazing time, but they can really wear me down. I love markets and festivals, but they can be exhausting. I don't know if I'm the only one, but my interactions were great. People were amazing. I love talking about what I love, but it's still exhausting. I only had a two to five, three hours and I'm, I'm tired. Uh, I think a lot of that is due to the fact of loading in the morning and then unloading at the festival, setting everything up and then unloading or sorry, taking down everything, loading the car. Now I'm sitting at home and I'm dreading the fact that I have to unload and put everything in the house again. So that's that. My brother-in-law came to visit and say hello and we caught up and he helped take down everything and load the car and I'm so appreciative. He didn't have to do that and that was really, really sweet of him. And I really appreciative of, of that. That's that's who he is and he's such such a sweet, sweet guy. I think I'm going to catch you all up tomorrow on the market and recap everything and possibly give you guys some numbers. Um, my numbers probably will not be that great. I'm not 
good at I can tell you the things that I sold and and the price of everything. However, I know that there's going to be fees involved, the supply costs, which I know I should be better about that. So I need to work on those things. But hopefully I can catch you guys up on that tomorrow. Thank you for coming along and I'll see you then. Hello, I'm here for a little bit of a recap. It has been a few days. The festival was on Saturday the 9th of March and is currently Tuesday the 12th. So some time has passed. I had a chance to look at my numbers and kind of give you just a little bit of a recap on the day. Now this is not a great recap. I have the items that were purchased as well as the prices. I did take an account for fees such as Square or PayPal, Apple Pay. However, I do not have an accurate pricing as far as deducting things like the taxes that are accounted for in my state. So I live in the state of Texas, small businesses, any items that are purchased from small businesses are taxed. So. I do take that into account when I are selling my paintings, but I'm not as far as giving you guys numbers. Now every quarter I have to pay into the state and so there's a website that I go to and I calculate all the things that were purchased in those few months and then I have to pay those taxes. So I take an account when pricing, but as far as giving you numbers today, not so much. As well as any deduction or anything that I have to take out for cost of items like the paint that I'm using or the time or the canvases or wooden panels that I'm using. So if you're coming here for an accurate pricing, I'm sorry. I'm working on it. I'm trying to find a good spreadsheet that, I, that will calculate all those things. So I think I mentioned this before, but if you have one, then let me know. I know that there are a lot of crochet artists that have really great spreadsheets. So I'm wondering if I could use that and customize it for me, if that will work. Other than that, I'm not sure. So I have a little notebook here and again, my apologies for not the most accurate description, but yesterday was a three hour event and I was there a bit early and there were customers that came into the booth a little bit earlier than, than two o'clock. So I would say as far as being there and selling things, it was about a three and a half hour, well, even longer than that because I stayed longer as the event dwindled down. Uh, the, there was lots of beautiful colors and people celebrating. and It was just a, an amazing event. It was a, called Holly Festival of Colors. And, and at the end, they had a big celebration. I think they started at 4.30 and that's where they put out more chalk and then you could throw that up in celebration of spring. And after the event, there were more people coming and shopping because they were just kind of looking around. I think I mentioned this before, there wasn't many of us. There was a, a sweet vendor next to me, beautifully designed. I've seen him at a couple events. He's really great always really nice with the information that he gives. I've noticed that a lot with vendors that I come in contact with. They're always so generous with their information and just always willing to be helpful. I, I saw that there was a, there were sandbags on the bottom of his tent to hold the wall from buckling in. We had a lot of wind that day. And I asked him, I said, oh, what are these? They're like grommets. There were these plastic caps that you put on the inside and the outside of the vent. They locked in together, holding the tent in place. And then you put a sandbag there so it doesn't drag. And he showed me them. He's like, here, here are some. I'm like, no, no, that's okay. And they're like, no, no, just, 
just take these, we have plenty. And I said, well, can I pay you for them? And they're like, no. And I'm, so that was really generous to offer that. So now I have these little plastic hooks and I just need sandbags to hold up the wall. Because during the event, there was one time where the wall just went, the wind blew and it just took it and it just knocked some of the paintings over, which is not fun. But anyway, they sell, they sell jewelry. And then I had a vendor to my right that did freeze dried candies. And then on Lee's left, there was another vendor that did, they sold popsicles. And so it was really intimate. It was a really small event. It was nice and I really enjoyed it. It was really, really great. So throughout the whole day, I sold one six by six painting, four keychains, eight magnets, one DIY floral kit. And a floral kit is basically where I include some brushes and some paint and a canvas and an easel, like a little mini canvas, a three by three and an easel, similar to the ones that I sell. And I pipe white flowers of different sizes and different types ahead of time. And then they get to customize their own painting. They can paint the flowers or paint the canvas. It's really, I it's really cute. I really think it's cute. So it's kind of like a, a way to kind of get into this style of painting without too much of the hassle or the mess. I sold one four by four and one brooch. And so that totaled $230 and 40 cents. And the event itself, as far as like paying into a booth fee, we were really fortunate because I think they're going through some changes in their department for the city. And so the parks and recreation took over the event. I don't think they typically take over events like this. I'm not sure. But anyway, the lady that contacted me, she said, hey, we're going through some changes. And I know this is last minute. The booth, we're going to waive the booth, booth fee. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's incredible because... Sometimes booth fees can, can be pretty pricey. Luckily, the ones that I attend in the city are really affordable. They're usually not too high. I've noticed any time that I attend any school-related fairs or craft fairs, those tend to be a little higher, maybe because they're two days, or they're trying to fund for whatever specific activity, whether that be choir or band or the baseball team or whatever school function that they're doing. So it's really usually affordable. Mostly the ones that I've come through in my city have been maybe 20 bucks. So that's really, really great for vendors. They're really generous. And that's always super helpful when the fees are not that high. Overall, again, the day was really, really great. I had a great time. The weather again was really windy, but the sun was shining. I've came across a lot of really sweet customers or investors. I would like to think of investors because they're investing in, in my art, but it was really enjoyable. I've been very fortunate that so far in the year that I've done this, I've come across just really kind, kind people. I had some struggles. I think I mentioned it a little bit in the beginning when I first set up and I had some people in my booth and the sweet lady was buying some magnets and I, before I left, I had my square, my chip card square reader working and it was great and I got to the event and we put everything in and, and, and it wasn't working and I had to go in and do some settings and again, it wasn't working and so she was really kind and said, hey, do you have Apple Pay? And I'm like, yeah, I do, but I've never set it up. And she's like, oh yeah, it's really, really easy. Just go in and set it up and I'll send it to you that way. And I'm like, okay. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how long is this gonna take? Well, luckily I think I had my card put in already. And so it was really quick. I just 
had to do push up through a few buttons and I can't remember, it was, it went by so quickly. And then she sent it to me. She's like, what's your phone number? And she sent it to me and was like, there it was. And she was kind. She's like, oh, there's probably some fees. I'll give it, I'll add a dollar. And so that was really generous. And then I had the next customer come in, which was a sweet friend of mine that I have met um, at other vendor events. Her name is Kim and she came in with her uh, granddaughter-in-law, I believe, Daisy. And she was so sweet that she came to support me and purchase a few things. And again, I had some struggles. It still wasn't working and Daisy was so sweet. She's like, oh yeah, I've had this because she's also a vendor uh, at different events. And she said, oh, I've had this problem before. You probably have to uh, disconnect and reconnect. And, and so they were sweet and they paid with PayPal and they didn't have to do that because I was the one that was on the struggle bus, obviously. So um, once they left, <clears throat> excuse me, once they left, I went ahead and had some time to disconnect and reconnect and everything. And once that was all done, I was able to get it up and running. So that's always really frustrating. I don't know uh, if, if if any of you are watching that are also have issues and struggles like that, if you have any tips, I even brought the free one. And for some reason, maybe because there was some issues with the other one and I had to disconnect that one, I couldn't just plug that one in and go. So I was there for what felt like forever trying to figure it out. And, and that's frustrating because there's customers in your booth and you want to greet them. But then for me, I felt really flustered so with that being said, it worked out. It was fine. People were great, super complimentary. A lot of them have not seen that type of art before. So they were asking really great questions about, oh, what is this? Or how do you create this? And, and that's always really fun to share your joy with others in other ways. With that being said, I think I'm going to end the video here. Thank you for coming along. I really don't know what all you'll see as far as the footage. I have recorded some of the art making process, the prepping, some of the event day. I didn't take my camera. I might've mentioned that. I didn't take my camera with me. I didn't feel comfortable with it. I, have never used it outside of the home and I'm just now getting used to it. And so I used my phone. And so there were some moments I looked back at the footage and I'm like looking off in another direction because I have the phone flipped in the, not the back of the camera, but the front, I guess the screen part of the camera. And so I'm looking off in a different way, but anyway, Thank you for coming along. If you're still here, I, I appreciate you Follow me along on this first vlog. I'm getting used to everything and hopefully soon enough I'll get better at figuring out the accurate pricing of my items. I'm really just enjoying the moment right now. This is a little a side hustle for me and I, I love it. And I'm hoping to continue doing this as as I can. But again, please subscribe if you subscribe for more content, like if you want to like, and thank you again for coming along. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.